All right, okay. uh, with us in the studio is a, uh, our political correspondent, Ayo Dele Ozumbaku. Good morning, Ayo. Good How morning, are you? Gozi. Good morning. Yeah, you, you've, you've been reporting on... <laughs> <laughs> just like, in my name. Okay, let's just get oh to it. God. Let's just get to okay, it. Okay, go on. <laughs> <laughs> you've been reporting on politics for quite a while now yeah, yeah. in the country. Has there ever been a time when you've heard or seen such agitation coming from most every part of the country? I tell you, we've never had it this bad. We've never had it this bad. I was privileged to cover the 1999 election, 2003 mm. election, 2011 election, and um, the most, um, the election that was uh, contested with so much bitterness and acrimony mm. started in 2011, and 2015 election was the height of it. And since that time, the country has been divided across ethnic and religious line. So, what you're seeing now is a manifestation of what happened in 2015. Now, if you notice, mm -hmm. the independent people of Biafra, IPOB, or the movement of the sovereign states of uh, Biafra, that is Masor, Masor, they went on the ground for like six years under the former administration of Good Luck, Ibele Jonathan. Okay. They felt that this is one of our own, it should be given a chance. Mm. So immediately, Muhammad Buhari got there and being from the northern part of the country. You understand? Mm -hmm. There's a chill to Boko Haram and everything. Now we have a situation whereby they've been able to address the problem of the South-South, but that one is just like a cake of gunpowder gun powder. waiting to explode. Mm -hmm. But with the wisdom of the Vice President, they've been able to dialogue with their leaders and everything. So we now have, it's now the turn of the South-Eastern part of the country. They are now saying that, look, we want to go our way. And but do we have it this divided because of the way it was handled from the get-go? Mm. Structure, structurally. These people, you know, agitating for, um, you, know, uh, you know, for their own country, own state and everything. When you look at the merit of their case, they are saying we are not having a fair share of the pie. Mm -hmm. We are not, you know, we don't have this sense of belonging. And if you remember, in the last um, national conference, in 2040 confab, yes. it was recommended that more states should be granted. As mm -hmm. in 18 more it, states. Yes. And the southeast region is part of the states that they, as of now, the status quo is that they have just five states. Mm. In the old um, regions that we have in Nigeria, everybody had six, six, six. The six. point is, when we say just five states, okay. even if the southeast had six states would that really make the difference is it not a question of leadership I and the delivery of the goods that's I really important here to give to give life to this agitation mm -hmm. what happened was that they alleged that this administration the pattern of appointments that mm. they've seen was lopsided is lopsided has not shown that sense of belonging i spoke with the president of oanese in Jibu on sunday and he reiterated it John said, Mordo. Yes. He said, Ayo, we don't have anybody. We don't have anybody from the Southeast as the Inspector General of Police. We don't have anybody from the Southeast as a Chief of Army Staff. We don't have anybody as Chief of Naval Staff, Chief of Defense Staff. All the defense configuration, they are like a, a, a mili, um, security configuration we have in Nigeria, even as bad as NSCDC, Customs, Immigration, like 16, 17 of them. There's nobody from the south. I'll take you back to my question. Okay. Uh, that is this, do we have these problems on our hands because of the way it was hand, handled from the get-go? Remember when the president came in and it was asked the issue of 95-5%. He didn't mm. hide his feelings. He didn't certainly, miss words. Certainly. He was categorical about Although it. Although the handlers of Mr. President tried to like, you know, play down on that mm. issue. But when, after he started making certain appointments, the people from the South East started getting worried. You have the Minister of uh, Science and um, Technology, yes. that's Obunaya Ono. You have the Minister of Labor, and those appointments, the people from the South East will tell you that they are statutory appointments. That they have they're, to not give strong, they're not strong, they're not juicy, according yes, to some Because according to their states say. and everything, and we mm. have Elela Maya from Trade, Investment, mm. and Commerce. But what these people are saying, we are not, government has not, you know, reached out to them in the sense of, what is the agitation? Nam Bikano, they took the first step by making sure Nam Bikano is released from prison. Mm. And the long time that he stayed under in, in incarceration, 
have given you know this kind of backing the followers and his uh, religion his doctrine he immediately left um, the prison is becoming as assumed this larger than life toga now, the, the, the statement busolami just referred to uh, where the uh, president uh, buhari actually made a speech saying that uh, uh, people who did not vote for him should not expect much uh, from him. I mean, uh, compare this with places like the U.S., for example. They'll tell you uh, election and all of that ends, or the campaigning and all, you know, whatnot ends when the person has been voted into power. Once you're voted in, you are everybody's president, you're everybody's governor, and you're everybody's senator. As the case you agree may be. with me that it's not necessarily the. Uh, the the, is that the, the root of this, all the situation all of in the United States of America right mm -hmm. now? After last year's election, yeah, America it's a, has not it's been a the divided same. nation. It's a divided yes. nation. We I can still tell you. But the, no, no section mm -hmm. is stifled of infrastructure or no, recognition. No, no. When they're that's, talking that's, about that's, that's the, the democracy issue. in America, they're not. Mm -hmm. they're, that's the issue. They're not talking about infrastructure. They've gone beyond, beyond that because they practice true federalism. Mm -hmm. The, com the state of California is the sixth largest economy in the world. In the world, yeah. In the world, mm -hmm. so you can get it. So in Atlanta, it's the local community that manage the busiest airport in the world, Atlanta Airport, just their local government. Mm -hmm. So they are practicing true federalism. NYPD's budget, I'm sure it's <laughs> three times as big, you know, bigger mm -hmm. than Nigeria's budget. Yeah. So power is devolved. You don't have a situation whereby 52% goes to the federal, federal government. So the that division is, is that of ideology, it's structural, not, it's structural. not, it's not what we have yes, here yes. Let's come back to yes. the issue of the DSS so, uh, haunt, man haunt uh, for on uh, um, hate preachers or those who make hate yes, speech Francis. and all of that. The point is, where do you even draw the line between what is uh, hate speech and what is you know something that is uh, justifiable like the different calls from different parts of the country what the ROI youth did is not in any way justifiable absolutely not not justifiable there's no how you can justify mm -hmm. justify that mm -hmm. and you know the southeasterners they've been agitating that they want to go and you're saying you're giving them quick notice ultimatum when you know that the level of investment if the federal government or the CS, DSS if they don't move now I can tell you that the uh, silence persecution of the people from the southeast will begin in the north. And we can't in any way, we can't in any way. Um, the uh, southern, uh, southern leaders said on Sunday, uh, they communicated by Jim Cowd mm -hmm. said that this is not going to be a, a southeast issue alone. Mm -hmm. That all, everybody, even Senator Femi Okorumu said it yesterday, that all Yorubas, all the south, uh, western, uh, you know, Yorubas in the north, that we have to quit too. So and you have the Niger Delta. Um, do you understand? This is like a recipe for disaster. It, it, it really it's is. Not, it's not something. We, I, didn't, I didn't witness what happened in 1967 to 1970, definitely. Mm -hmm. But I, I've read books. And mm -hmm. if anything, this is how it began. So this is not a time. This is a time to talk about Nigeria. All right. A, Ayo, let, let's, let's, you, you just went to history now. Let's, mm. Let me go there with you mm -hmm. and stay with 1950 and 1966 mm -hmm. when the North itself calls for this kind of agitation that, okay, except you give us a so, so, so demand. We, we mm -hmm. don't want to be part of uh, this arrangement anymore. And the heavens didn't fall. Issues were resolved amicably. Right now, we so what's have, different now? We have the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mm. In 1963, we became, you know, a Republican country, mm -hmm. a federation. And what they are saying now, that this is a marriage that has lasted for 54, 55 years. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, but, mm -hmm. And the constitutional conferences we've had, the one we had in 2005, the one we've had um, during the Bacha regime, mm -hmm. the one we had in 2014, the unity clause, anybody that is conveying that conference, they'll say it's not negotiable. Mm -hmm. That we have to, you know, judge or instead of war war, that our coexistence is not negotiable. That's a fundamental, that's a fundamental that, 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 is that, look, that is in place. That is in place. So what Oanese is now saying, they're not mm -hmm. saying they want to move out of the country. Mm -hmm. They are saying that we need a better share. We need a better deal from this structure called Nigeria that everything seems to be lopsided. So that, with that, I see that the federal government is something they can deal with. And in dealing with that, Professor Yemi Oshibajo has started a consultation with stakeholders, mm -hmm. key stakeholders, leaders of thought, opinion leaders, 
what is wrong? Well, you don't, you, don't cut, you don't cut someone's hand and the person keeps wearing a glove. So that's a Yoruba <laughs> adage there, you know. Arawa uh, youth yesterday just wrote a letter to the acting president insisting or asking him mm -hmm. to let the Igbos go. They even went for that to, to quote the United Nations Charter Article 1 or 2 talking about uh, issue of self-actualization. Yeah. So how will the this acting group president right now, work this on that? set of uh, youths now, th right now they are personal non grata. They are looking for them. That's why the, um, the secret police and um, the, the police de de declared them, they're looking for them. Mm. So as I'm talking to you right now, their opinion will not count. If the vice president wants, if the active president wants to meet with leaders, and we meet with leaders of thought, we meet with people that can reach out. And this is not the representation of the entire North. So you're I've saying that's, that's the point, but when you have a, a person like Ango Abdullahi, mm. who mm. is a very, very well-respected uh, personage yeah. in the North, yeah actually you know being on the same page yeah. with this Arewa youth what do you make of it but then again what outcome do we even expect from these consultations uh, between the uh, acting president and the leaders of the different uh, parts of the country the northern leaders has had meetings with the southeast leaders south south all kinds of leaders this consultation actually if you remember mm. we forget easily if you remember in 2015 the nation, the nation's economy was almost brought down its knees when yeah. um, it's, um, we were meant to be producing 2.2 .2 million barrels a day. And it As went down to 1.6 so or thereabouts. barrels yeah. and everything. Mm. When you had a new group, if, you know, they all they all made several kind of demands. That's the Niger Delta Avengers. Avengers. And every day they were blowing up pipelines. At a point in time, they went to Delta states. They actually um, yeah. attacked our well, That's not the uh, case the anymore. Volcanoes. We have right some now, kind of stability. What happened? Mm -hmm. The federal government reached out yeah. to their leaders. The federal government them. changed its, uh, its approach. Yes, mm -hmm. instead of, you know, instead of vying to confront them, instead of the military tactics, if, instead of the Operation Crocodile Tears or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that they wanted to have at that time, <laughs> they will they reach out to the key elements in that region. And right now, they've even allocated like 36 billion naira to the amnesty program. Yeah. What do we have now? Maximum capacity. We are doing well in the south-south. So that same tactics. We just recorded uh, about 12% reduction in pipe and vandalism. Yes, so yes. So you, can, you, you can see. So it's better the federal government continue consultation and reach out to these st key stakeholders. Mm. The Arewa people, I can tell you that that might not be the true representation of what is right, happening. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, the yeah. issue of the SS and the arrest. It is clear. The criminal code is very clear. Section mm. 37, I think. Mm -hmm. It's it's so clear when you talk about treason and, and, and treasonable felonies. It, those, 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 are, those are what the law says. And Erufai actually gave an instruction for that this report to for these people to be arrested. Mm -hmm. And it's been weeks now. We've not heard anything. I will stay here to, you know, to justify the reason why we've not seen these people did not been arrested because it's also a question we've been asking we journalists mm -hmm. that what's been happening. It's over a week that this the Inspector General actually addressed a press conference, but this time last week, the the, the Governor of um, Kaduna State actually. All that for the arrest and a lot of you know prominent nigerians mm -hmm. i wonder what why after a week down the line we've not seen scapegoats and they've from still been speaking youth. and they've been speaking they've been from speaking somewhere definitely so that makes it strange to uh, me not, well, that gives it another dimension because yeah. the southerners the south south leaders are saying that look that the person beating the drums might be, you know, somewhere underneath that this might be having backing from, you know, prominent people from in the north. So we're looking at uh, the absolutely. Sponsors. You, you just sponsors. talked about another dimension to mm. it. Now, is it enough to arrest and prosecute these hate mongers? <laughs> is that not liable to bring about a totally different dimension? Like the acting president said, mm. you cannot even begin to quantify the unintended consequences yeah. when mm -hmm. we have all of this. Look, agitations we, when we, the democracy there. comes with it, it costs and you can't say because of freedom of speech freedom of expression and you now use any medium as a medium of inciting people mm. so subverting you know interest and everything you know yes. with freedom limitation. comes responsibility and yeah. the law is very yeah. clear do you, really. do you understand mm -hmm. that mm. so you can't be given ultimatum you can't tell these people this set of people some of them those easterners in the north some of them were born in the north I tell you one thing. Mm. Something strange happened in uh, Castina states during the 2015 election. I was in Dara. I, I covered the president as he, he voted in the presidential election and the governorship election. 
I noticed that the hotel and that area which we stayed in Castina State mm. that was like kind of deserted. And I asked the question, where are these people? Where are these shops? Why are these shops locked and everything? They told me that these are brothers from the southeast, um, eastern part of the country. They had to leave before the presidential election. Wow. They left. Two weeks after, after President Buhari had emerged the president, two weeks after the governorship, I went back to the same spot and everywhere came into life, commercial activities, Again. and it was bubbling. And I walked up to one of them and he told me that, ah, where were you last two weeks? I said, we had to, we had to leave. Hmm. And talking in terms of commerce and commercial, they were the people, the Eastern people are the people that, you know, bring life. In, Which was yes, what that's, asked, what, that's asked, what we hear yeah, over and over again that anywhere you go to yeah. in Nigeria where yes, there's no, no you know your people uh, you know the way my it is people, my people my people according to governor okay, so, we, yeah, so uh, let, let's uh, come let's even you know uh, bring a wider dimension to it what is going on now in Nigeria what is playing out is it a failure of history a failure of the education um, sector that has failed to emphasize for example that Anamdi Azikiwe was born in Zungeru that mm. Ojuku was born there too, mm. and that people like Kaduna and Zogu, who led the first of freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and you now use any medium as a medium of inciting people, mm. so subverting, you know, interest and everything. You know, yes. with freedom limitation. comes responsibility, and yeah. the law is very yeah. clear. Do you, do you understand? Mm -hmm. That mm. so you can't be giving ultimatum. You can't tell these people, this set of people, some of them, those Easterners in the north, some of them were born in the north. I tell you one thing, mm. something strange happened in uh, Castina States during the 2015 election. I was in Dara, I, I covered the president as he, he voted in the presidential election and the governorship election. I noticed that the hotel and that area which we stayed in Castina States mm. that was like kind of deserted and I asked the question, where are these people, where are these shops, why are these shops locked and everything, they told me that these are brothers from the southeast um, eastern part of the country. They had to leave before the presidential election. Wow. They left. Two weeks after, after President Buhari had emerged the president, two weeks after the governorship, I went back to the same spot and everywhere came into life, commercial activities, Again. and it was bubbling. And I walked up to one of them and he told me, that, ah, where were you last two weeks? I said, we had to, we had to leave. Hmm. And talking in terms of commerce and commercial, they were the people, the Eastern people are the people that, you know, uh, bring life. In, you Which know, was yes, what that's, asked, what, that's asked, what we hear yeah, over and over again, that anywhere you go yeah. to in Nigeria, where yes, there's no... Yes, you know your people, uh, you know the way it is. My people, my people, according to Governor <laughs> okay, Rocha. So, yeah, so, uh, let, let's uh, come, let's even, you know, uh, bring a wider dimension to it. What is going on now in Nigeria? What is playing out? Is it a failure of history, a failure of the education um, sector that has failed to emphasize, for example, that Anamdi Azikiwe was born in Zungeru, that mm. Ojuku was born there too, mm. and that people like Kaduna and Zeogu, who led the first coup, was born in the north, and so many other people. If I mean, I could tell my story as a, a full Nigerian, but yeah. I won't even use the opportunity here. Yeah. Where, what do you do with the person whose mother is Calabar, the father is Igbo, the son is Yoruba, for yeah. example? Ngozi Alebo, you know, at the start, you know, she speaks Yoruba fluently. Absolutely. And the way we've interacted and everything, there's no boundary whatsoever that we've seen. But what is happening here is that government should reach out. There's this perception about this government. President mm. Momodu Buhari especially should reach out. Do you understand? Mm. We wish him, you know, um, quick recovery, quick recovery yeah. coming to Nigeria. Good health. He's, he was elected in 2015 to be the, the president of our world. Mm -hmm. And it was, he has a pan, you know, um, Nigerian mandate. So any section that is feeling, you know, le left, out. Uh, left out, government must restore confidence government must say look that i expect by now the federal government should hit the ground running major projects All from right. the southeastern part of the mm. country and everywhere to make sure that like many run, have said we are all be our friends really it's not just about mm. evils yeah. anybody that is uh, marginalized anybody that feels neglected is a yeah so the government is so every it's part two years of this down country the line, feels this administration will need to hit down uh, we hit the ground running and yeah. start doing projects and restoring confidence across the country Okay, well, we have to emphasize there is a Nigerian project. We are sure of that. That is so. Let everyone that is actually sacrosanct. buy into it and believe that they are and part of it. The ah, Ayo Zumbaku, our political correspondent. Thank you so much for uh, joining us on TVC Breakfast this morning. It's always a delight. <laughs> Thank you.